heart disease. What is an atheroma? What do thrombosis and aneurysm mean? Why does atheroma increase the risk of thrombosis and aneurysm? What is a myocardial infarction? What are the factors that affect the occurrence of coronary heart disease? So heart disease kills more people in the UK than any other disease. And half of the heart disease deaths are from coronary heart disease, which affects the coronary arteries, which are the ones that supply the heart muscle with glucose and oxygen for respiration. And the blood flow is reduced by a buildup of fatty deposits called atheroma. So you can see in this diagram here, there is a buildup of this fatty deposit to form an atheroma which narrows the coronary artery, the lumen, therefore less blood can get through and if it comes completely blocked then the blood flow of the heart is stopped so the heart muscle beyond that blockage doesn't get oxygen and glucose and therefore can cause a heart attack or myocardial infarction. So atheroma Arthrovers are fatty deposits which form within the walls of arteries. And these fatty streaks are accumulations of white blood cells which have taken up low density lipoproteins or LDLs. So LDLs are the bad ones, they're the litter droppers, they're the ones that drop the horrible stuff on those arteries. And the streaks become enlarged to form arthromatous plaques. And these plaques become quite hardened, um, so they're quite difficult to get rid of once they've developed. So they're found in the larger arteries and they're deposits of cholesterol, fibres and dead muscle cells. And then they start to bulge into the lumen, which narrows the artery and therefore the blood flow is reduced to that part of the heart. And these build up of the arthromas, the fatty deposits or the cholesterol deposits, actually increase the risk of both thrombosis and aneurysms. So it, the risks of a high fat diet are that cholesterol builds up inside the arteries. So you can see here a 3D version and it's become very narrow part where the blood can actually flow past. So it restricts the blood flow Therefore, the tissues after the blockage or the after the narrowed part get less glucose and oxygen. So atherosclerosis is the furring up of the arteries or the deposits of the arteries, deposits of fatty material or cholesterol in the arteries. So the cholesterol builds up for the plaque and then what can happen in the later stages, this plaque can actually burst to form a blood clot and this could actually block the artery completely which then would cause could cause a myocardial infarction or heart attack so you can see there that the blood flow is restricted and then eventually it can be it could clot therefore it's completely blocked therefore blood can't flow with the oxygen with the glucose can't flow to that part of the heart so, what is thrombosis? If the atheroma breaks the endothelium of the blood vessel, so it ruptures, it forms a rough surface which interrupts the flow of blood. So, that this can form actually result in a blood clot or thrombus. So, thrombosis is basically the plaque burst to form a blood clot. Um, so this may bl block the blood vessel, stopping the blood supply to the tissues beyond it, and this tissue dies due to the lack of oxygen and glucose. So thrombosis is blood clot if the aneurysm. The arthromas that lead to the formation of the thrombus can actually weaken the artery wall, and what happens is these weakened points of the wall swell like a balloon-like blood filled structure which is called an aneurysm so kind of bulges open or forms like a, a pool or a balloon like structure full of blood and this can actually burst which can lead to hemorrhage if it was an artery in the brain that would cause a stroke 
but because this is heart disease you can get aneurysms in the heart as well so myocardial infarction is a heart attack which reduces the supply of oxygen to the heart muscle which is caused by the blockage of the coronary artery um, if this I think I might have said this previously but basically if it's near to where the coronary artery branches off the aorta then it's going to block the whole so if it was right up here it would block the whole side of that heart of the heart because it would block all these minor vessels as well so the closer it is to the junction of the aorta the worse it is because it would block more of cut the blood supply off to more of the heart however if it was one right at the bottom here one of the smaller branches then the heart attack won't be as severe because it's only going to actually cause a tiny part of the heart to die so some people can actually kind of cycle home when they've had a heart attack because it's only a minor heart attack so um, in the uk 0.5 million people have had a heart attack and about a third of people or less than a third die from it so you can get minor heart attacks and you can recover from it so the risk factors associated with coronary heart disease are things like smoking high blood pressure blood cholesterol and diet now this list isn't fully comprehensive uh, there could be other things like alcohol um, genetics etc that can also affect the, um, the risk of getting coronary heart disease so we'll look at smoking so smoking makes it two to six times more likely to suffer from heart disease so actually giving up smoking is the best way to increase life expectancy smoking the reason it's so bad is because it releases carbon monoxide which combines irreversibly with hemoglobin in the red blood cells to form carboxyhemoglobin this reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood so the heart must work harder and raises the blood pressure which increases the risk of coronary heart disease on strokes so angina is a name for the chest pain during exercise because of lack of oxygen to the heart muscle um, so tobacco also contains nicotine which stimulates the production of adrenaline which increases the heart rate raises blood pressure also makes the red blood cells more sticky which means there's a higher risk of thrombosis or clotting so high blood pressure so blood pressure can be affected by things like genes and lifestyle so prolonged stress can increase your blood pressure certain diets lack of exercise are all things which can contribute to high blood pressure and um, because there's already quite a high blood pressure in the arteries if the blood pressure is even higher it means the heart must work even harder to pump the blood um, so therefore the arteries are more likely to develop aneurysms or those bulges of weakened walls and burst or hemorrhage so to resist the higher pressure the artery walls become thickened and hardened which restricts the blood flow so next one blood cholesterol the components of the membrane which are carried in blood by lipoproteins so high density lipoproteins are actually the good ones or hdls are the ones that remove cholesterol so they're the litter pickers so the high density lipoproteins remove cholesterol from tissues and transport it to the liver for excretion so having high density lipoproteins or good cholesterol actually protects the arteries from coronary heart disease however low density lipoproteins are the ones the litter droppers they transport cholesterol from the liver what? A world is in danger. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the name of her story. Oh, okay. The world is in danger. I have to tell you. It's got loads of funny bits in it. It's got loads of funny bits in it. But I need to do this and then I'll listen. I'm in the middle of this. Okay, then can I read it to you? Yeah. I'll be quiet. Okay. Next one is blood cholesterol. So this is the components of the membranes which are carried in the blood by 
lipoproteins. So high density lipoproteins are the litter pickers. They're the good lipoproteins. So high density lipoproteins remove cholesterol from the tissues and transport it to the liver for excretion. So they actually protect arteries from coronary heart disease. However, the low density lipoproteins are the litter droppers. The low density lipoproteins are the bad cholesterol and they transport cholesterol from the liver to the tissues, including the arteries, so they can lead to arthroma and coronary heart disease. Next one is diet. So a high salt diet increases blood pressure, which obviously could lead to coronary heart disease. High saturated fat, including low density lipoproteins, those litter droppers, that will increase the risk of coronary heart disease. Antioxidants, e.g. vitamin C, reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and also dietary fibre reduces the risk of coronary heart disease. So there are good things that you can do with your diet to reduce the risk, even if you were genetically predispositioned to have a higher risk. There are still good things you can do with your lifestyle to reduce the risk of coronary heart disease.